Take it away. Okay. Well, hey guys. My name is Fernando, and we are going to be presenting the infrared distance sensor. And so yeah, my name is Fernando, and this is humble set. And basically, this is the infrared sensor. Now, infrared sensors are actually more commonplace than you think. They're even right there on top of that door. And typically, what these infrared sensors do is that they measure infrared energy given off by a given object in a given point of view. And basically, it detects a form of heat energy coming off from any object. And anything, all objects above or hotter than absolute zero or negative 270 degrees Celsius is actually um, given off heat, is actually giving off heat. And since we humans can't see this type of infrared wave wavelength, that's why we rely on electronics to be able to measure it for us. And basically, these tech this technology is passive in which it does not emit energy, but rather observes the infrared given off by a given object. And so it has many implications, such as driverless cars, and even in the Mars rover mission coming up in 2020, and the Mars uh, rover that has already, uh, uh, that's already in Mars right now. And basically they're trying to collect data and measuring the, what, uh, what the weather is like in Mars itself. So basically they're more commonplace than you think. And right now they're even in your homes probably, in security systems. If you move, basically it sends off an alarm if, it, if the security system was on. And it detects a change in, energy, in, a change in temperature. Uh, and that's how it goes off. And with these sensors contains little pro microprocessors and basically it emits a kind of voltage and we turn this voltage into a form of, uh, we use an equation to be able to turn it into something we can read, into like for example centimeters and we are going to be demonstrating it to you later in the session. And basically here are the schematics of what our sensor is. It's pretty simple. It requires power, hence 5 volts. It requires a ground, and it requires an A0 or microprocessing slot, so that way we'd be able to read it in our computer. What you see here is an oscillator, which is basically a measuring device or sensor that we are trying to get from, uh, that we're trying to get. And, um, yeah, and Right there in the middle it is what we're trying to read in the form of voltage. And so the closer something is to the sensor, the higher the voltage it gives off. And the further it is away, the lower it gives off. And that's how we read, uh, that's how we read them. So yeah, uh, we'll show you our experience. We were actually gonna do a live demo, but because we can't show you the readings, we'll just show you, this, is, this was our setup basically. We have a sensor here. Well, we put it at certain distances and it would come out of uh, the kind of distances. Uh, you can't see it, but then we had uh, three measurements here, inclu uh, not including voltage, and we'll explain more why we had three different distance readings. So if you go to the next slide. But our first step in our experiment was measuring voltage, or having voltage as a function of distance. And here we got an equation, which you can, if you, this would be a helpful equation to solve distance as a function of voltage, but because we have Excel, it lets us like, avoid the pain of doing math and uh, solving for x to get distance. So let me show. And that's what we have here. So this, we have distance as a function of voltage. And from our data, you can see that we have two best fit lines, actually. And the reason why we had that is because our first best fit line, which was the power one, it didn't actually, it strayed away from the data a bit, and we wanted to like eliminate as much air as possible, so we put a second one, which was a polynomial, 
but then again, it's straight away from the data from here. But a trend we, that we notice is that sometimes the data falls in between the two best fit lines. And so we used that and calculated the average between the, do, the two best fits. And so we embedded that into our code. And here is our code of how to calculate the distances that we printed out. So here are our variables. We got, this, is, this is actually circuit seven. And to calculate the distance, we use type in this, which was the first function, the, the yeah, first function we had, and then to convert it into centimeters, we multiplied it by 100. Then this was the second equation, and the same thing here, and here was our average. And we added the two distances, divided by two to get the average. In our experiment, we had errors, and here we have a linear, linear, linearized voltage distance line which uh, helped us find the sigma of the slope. So the sigma, one sigma, is around three centimeters. So sigma, that means that our one standard deviation is around plus or minus, our thing would be accurate around plus or minus three centimeters, I believe. Basically, a standard deviation is a um, slope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the resolution, we got around 0 0.123 centimeters, so around one millimeter of the resolution is the minimum amount of distance that a sensor can detect, and it's around one millimeter, I think, fully. Uh, the sources of error that we encountered were like human error, First, we tried measuring with a book, but we sh I shook a lot, I guess. Then I switched the data, and the points were unreliable. Another thing is the sensor itself. Every once in a while, gave uh, it had a jump in the readings out of nowhere, like nothing changed, and it just jumped. And things we oh wait. Things we could improve on is like more precise measurements, uh, better code. We could code out the spikes. We can try coding out the spikes in that the sensor gave us, and also like better equipment. So maybe we don't have to code out the spikes as much. And and that's it. Any questions? oscillator as a form of device measuring, I couldn't find the specific symbol for it, so I had to use an oscillator as an alternative. Oh, you, you know. Oh, okay. okay. And, yeah, it measures the voltage. I didn't even know what a sensor did. A sensor actually did. I thought it just measured light and then it reflected back, but it was actually more than that. It was actually giving off. A, it actually, I, it actually presented more details than I have uh, expected, and um, it would be really useful because I would want someday want to build a driverless car, and this is very practical in my field. So. <laughs> Uh, I learned that precise measurements are important for accurate data. 